is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Weird News Podcast, brought to you by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Ariane, and I'm joined here with the beautiful Heidi. Hello. Our first topic on this Weird News episode is going to be about how a Chinese city has banned dog walking in daylight hours. So why? Yeah. So we're going to start off with why. (laughs) That's insane. (laughs) So... Well, I guess there was a um, a Chinese founder. I don't know if he was the exact Chinese founder or if he was like one of many, but his name was Mao Zedong. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, Mao Zedong. Yeah. It, did I say that wrong? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but oh, it's, okay. He, it's okay. Is he still alive? Probably no, not. He's no. like a founder, so it's been there no. for some years, right? <laughs> yeah, it's Mao. Yeah, he's Mao. like a well-known... Um, I don't know what that word is for him. Ruler, yeah. I guess you could say. Yeah. Very communist, apparently. Oh, he yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah, very communist. <laughs> well, anyway, according to him and his, like, thought process, I guess, mm-hmm. he thinks that um, having a dog or a pet is an affectation. Now, what affectation means... <laughs> Thank you. Thank ...is you. Um, it's not really natural like it's to put on a facade like oh. you're you know faking it to be to make yourself look better basically that sounds like a very communist idea yeah <laughs> so that's why and that's also why there are really strict rules about dog ownership in china oh. so which i didn't know this until i read this story i was like what well, why dogs mm. are everywhere they're awesome <laughs> i mean i'm allergic do, to do them, you really think that <laughs> i like dogs actually i'm a dog person i oh. don't really like cats but okay. i had a we growing up we had a dog a uh, german shepherd mm-hmm. the best dog ever and i really liked that dog i was allergic to yeah that then dog. you just died from your allergies yeah basically <laughs> mm-hmm. but anyway because of this he doesn't that's why they put the uh put this rule or ban on dog walking specifically in this um town called wenshan Mm -hmm. um they are no longer able to walk their dogs between the hours of 7 a.m and 10 p.m is that like to discourage dog ownership i don't know i just i don't know i feel like that was seems like it would be though yeah i feel like maybe that's the idea to discourage dog ownership because i feel like that sounds like definitely a thing that Mao would say because like the idea of like oh we're all equal and oh you have a dog you think you're better than us yeah you know like in a communist idea yeah man so um there's also a an area in beijing Mm -hmm. where large dog larger dogs are banned like you can't even have them oh yeah it's crazy and so that's why they're saying there's like hardly any like dog parks or anything like that Mm -hmm. because they don't want you to have dogs they don't feel like oh. it's a normal thing to do like in america we think pets are awesome <laughs> right yeah we have a lot of pets yeah but um they're not allowed even when they do walk them when they are able to walk them in the early mornings or at night they can't take them to parks it's just like a walk along oh, and you have to clean okay. up after it so you can't take it to a shopping center sports facility public areas of any sort just down your street but i feel like down your street is a public area so right yeah you know but um yeah they're like we don't want your dogs out and about and if they are you have they have to be on a leash no longer than three feet oh wow that's very strict it it, yeah yeah and that's why because they're they're really discouraged yeah yeah but i think that a three foot leash is very short yeah and so i mean what's the point 
in even walking your dog yeah i feel like that just means people will just not have dogs yeah well yeah because then they wouldn't even want to have them as a have that as a restriction anyway right. because having a pet you know you want to take care of it let it roam free do its thing you know yeah. i mean not you. too free but right i feel like then your animal your dog is going to be cooped up in your house all day mm -hmm. like you're not going to want that yeah no because especially if it's not trained, that's just going to be the oh, worst. That would be terrible. Yeah. And your neighbors are going to hate it. Yeah. Because you're going to have like a barky dog that's mm -hmm. upset. Yeah. Poor dogs. Um, they also, I don't know the um, immunization like criteria for owning dogs out there. Like if they have to be immunized or updated on their shots like out okay. here your mm -hmm. dogs have to have a shot record yeah, it's very we, regulated yeah um i don't know if they need it out there but they i it made it seem like they don't really regulate it as much because they said that a lot of this they're trying to say that a lot of this is because of people's fear of wild dogs and i don't know why they call them wild like rabies infected yeah because a lot of people die from rabies each year they have a high number of deaths from dog rabies dog rabies specifically huh. yeah i feel like maybe that's just the idea of like if your dog gets out yeah you know it's gonna like start a pack of wild dogs I, I that know, all have right. rabies yeah and it wasn't specified they're just saying this is a fear so they're not saying oh. oh it's because of this they're just like oh what if that situation does happen right and i was like oh wow that's crazy huh. it's it, you know it's not very common in like asian american households to have pets yeah it's not a common thing huh that's interesting that's interesting yeah but i know i do know that i read an article before that americans how we take care of dogs or even like household pets mm -hmm. or whatever we're seen as the weird ones oh yeah because I bet. yeah because, like we like let our pets sleep in our beds yeah and it's it like we treat them like family members yeah like there are kids or parents or whatever you know what i mean and, and and a lot of other countries they're like it's a pet it's an animal yeah it's very you know? different so yeah we're the weird ones for caring for animals the way we do hmm yeah interesting but, yeah and then i even think i heard one article say that we try to like humanize pets we do yeah we do well with the clothing and all that oh yeah like <laughs> halloween costumes yeah for your pet yeah even like the little dog sweaters like the miniature dogs what yep. are they called the ones that are here <laughs> oh like little like chihuahuas, chihuahuas. yeah they have yeah. clothes for all of those it's yeah like, they just, like people throw their pets birthday parties yeah yeah they do yeah, which is weird it's that's weird to I me i could see how other countries think that's very strange yeah that makes yeah, sense. It i think it's a little sense. strange i mean i don't have a dog or anything like i like grew up with cats which it's more difficult to uh do that to your cat yeah the cat <laughs> is not as down with that <laughs> yeah that is an interesting i just thought that was weird because i'm like oh huh? a lot of people have dogs here People, like, kiss their dogs in their mouth, though. They, like, let them lick all I'm on the face. I'm not okay with and, yeah. that. No. Because no. they lick everywhere they, else. Yes. Like, they and drink everything out of the yeah. else. They drink it at the toilet, and right. you want it to lick your face. I see my cat licking the carpet. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't want that cat to yeah, lick me. <laughs> no, that's disgusting. Well, it's like the story we did the other week when those people, the one man died of rabies because oh, yeah. he got licked by bats. Yeah. Just think of the germs that are getting passed. That's pushed also by. crazy that that man who died of rabies was the first case of rabies death since 1944. Mm -hmm. In so, the U.S. In the U.S., yeah. yeah. So I guess in China they have more common cases of rabies. I guess and, so, yeah. Huh. I can see how that would influence you to not want pets, yeah. you know? But I think that's also, like, we just have a different way we care for pets mm -hmm. here. Right. It, and that's true, too. But also, we have a lot of vaccines to prevent from a right. lot of... Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. that, too. So, not just for your pets, but for the humans, for us also. Yeah, for all of us. So, yeah. it's like, okay, that makes sense. But I just thought that was crazy that you can't walk your dogs in daylight hours. Like, that even if... For the simple fact that this guy thinks it's like super bougie for you to have a pet that sounds like mal yeah mm. i don't know him I'm, now i gotta go look him up I'm i like, mean I i've never met him <laughs> but <laughs> right um my next topic that i found that was interesting is about a man who let me just tell you the story um i'm probably gonna have to tell you half of this story but anyway this man is named okay i'm gonna mess up his name so bad i'm so sorry um a golly mm-hmm Supyagaliev. Okay. A galley. That's where we're going to go. With. Yeah, that sounds so, good. He's from Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. I have no idea where that place is at. 
but he was, I guess, pronounced dead after a DNA test on a badly burned human remains proved that with a 99.2% certainty, it was him. Oh. Yeah. And I guess he just wasn't around to... Yeah, no, he wasn't around to... Prove that that wasn't him? Exactly. No. So the family... like, man, if you were like out of town... Yeah. And then people just claim yeah. that you were dead. That'd be awful. Yeah, We're going to take a break and I'm going to tell you the rest of this story when we come back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast. So, um, we're talking about a golly, a man who was pronounced dead. From uh, humans remain human burnt human remains that proved ni- with the ninety nine point two percent certainty that it was him. Right. I also said I had no idea where Ke- Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is located. Right. In so Heidi. we, we want to clarify. Yes. So Kazakhstan is country right below Russia. It was formerly part of the Soviet Republic, and it is next to Mongolia and China. And then it is also next to like the other stands like um, Uzbekistan, Pakistan. Um, just like other countries oh, yeah. around there. Yeah. So exactly. it's like, it's a pretty big country. I mean, obviously not as big as Russia or as China. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just like a group that was part of the Soviet Republic. Right. So um, with that, <laughs> authorities uh, uh, issued an official death certificate to his family. And um, he was quote unquote buried um, just because the body was burnt already. Right. And I think their tradition is... I don't know if it's cremation still or if they still bury him, but they had a, his brother, how his brother described it is his brother's name is, uh, S Esengali. Mm -hmm. And he told a news site there that they held a wake and the extended family organized a traditional canil shy ceremony, um, which is like friends come and share tea and sympathy. And sympathize with the bereaved family. Okay. Kind of so, like a memorial almost. Yeah, yeah, basically. Okay. So um, they did all that. And mm-hmm. this happened, um, I want to say in September. Okay. So they did the whole like grieving, yeah. mourning. Mm-hmm. They took care of the body. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And they had to, because they, they it, the burnt remains were found in a field, they tested it and then told the family. Oh, Be- it wasn't like a family member who came right, and just said. just found it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They, somebody found it and they were like, oh, we have to identify the body kind of thing. And that's how they did the DNA test. God, anyway. worse. Yeah. Ugh. So two months later, um, th- November, around this time, mm-hmm. um, this ha- happened this year. So it was recently. Okay. <laughs> um, a golly walked through his brother's door wait like his house he <laughs> so two months after they had gone through their whole yeah. morning yeah oh god and um esengali the brother mm-hmm. he says like soon as his brother egali mm-hmm. who was pronounced dead right walked through his door his daughter um his young daughter is Singali's young daughter mm-hmm. um nearly dropped dead of a heart attack I for bet. seeing her uncle like alive and well and yeah walking through the that front would be door. so encouraging and so terrifying yeah i was like what two months later huh <laughs> right so apparently a galley has been known to just leave for weeks on end um, and just not tell the family. Like, he'll just go oh. and about his business. So because they haven't heard from him for a, lo- a while, they were like, okay, it has to be him. Like, right. he's that makes dead. Sense. You know, now we know, whatever. But apparently he actually um, taken up an offer for work in a nearby village oh. from a man he met at the market in July. Oh. And this was a four month long kind of work oh yeah that he did so he had been gone for a while yeah yeah he was gone in july and then yeah so he actually walked to the village did the work for 
the four months and then walked back. Oh, yeah. Wow. And so um, they, <laughs> yeah, it was just shocking to like the whole family that he's even alive. And then they asked the scientist because right. they were like, uh, our brother's yeah. right here. They did the DNA test. Yeah. And with it being like a 99.2%, the scientist who did the DNA test says she stands by her 99.2% findings and that we shouldn't forget about the 0.8% <laughs> that shows that it could possibly not be him. Well, what is that? Like his almost twin? I don't, like I don't a family know. family member who died? I don't know. I think that he was saying like on a day he was in the same marketplace as a person. But then my sister, I read the story to my sister and she was like, so did he kill that man? And that's why <laughs> that his DNA is on there. And he just left oh the body my God. or like so many questions. I was just like, well, maybe oh. like they got just it's just like a one off where they got a piece of the DNA like mixed up. Right, maybe in the lab they mixed yeah. it up or something. Yeah. Or he killed him. Maybe that happened. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, if it got mixed up in the lab, how would they have his DNA, though? Yeah. You know? So I'm like, he, he had to be around that dead body right. person. Or they just made a mistake. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They could have just messed up. Yeah. So I was like, that's super crazy. You're just going to what? Also, they went through that whole process for someone else. Yeah. So, like, I hope they didn't have to pay for anything. Right. Because they just paid for, like, the funeral of someone mm -hmm. else. Also, what about that other person? Now that's they still don't know who that is. That's what I'm saying. There's still a missing, and a whole family is missing a family member. Oh, my God. And they don't even know, like, if this person is alive or dead and yeah, well, what's dead. going on. Well, yeah. Yeah, they're real dead. <laughs> yeah. So, I was like, it's really not that hard as a scientist to say I might have made a mistake, Instead of just saying, I stand by that. Oh. Like, you obviously, this man is alive. There's obviously yeah. something happened. There's a mistake somewhere. Figure it out. Right. Find who the body actually right. belongs to. Figure out who it is. Oh, man. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'd this, be so pissed. Right? Me too. And the family is trying to get reimbursed for this whole, you know, memorial that they oh, had yeah. for him. Because they're Emotional like. Emotional damage. Yeah. And they were like, it's justified. No, he's supposed to be dead. And they're like, well, he's not clearly. Right. <laughs> he's right here. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't mad. know. It was it was definitely crazy. I just two months and your whole family thinks that you're dead. And right. I feel like that gives you enough time to like, even like as a little kid, like the daughter, his yeah. his niece, yeah. to grieve and then kind of move on. Like, oh, right. yeah, uncle's you're starting not here to no move more. on. Yeah. That's cruel. You know, like it you've really gone is. through a mourning process yeah. and then you're starting to like kind of like accept you know what's going on exactly. and like move forward and then you have to go through another weird adjustment like mentally yeah and if they went through their whole ceremony of like the grieving and like yeah. sharing tea and the like friends mourning and the family. with yeah. each other yeah that's i would be cruel. upset i would I'd be so mad yeah you know at that point you just start selling the guy's stuff yep, you know right? like you're renting they, out his room <laughs> yeah if they even had any of his stuff left but oh. apparently he was like a um, he didn't have a whole lot of stuff. Oh, it's kind so, of like traveled for work and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so if he had to travel to and from work, it's like, how much stuff do you That's really true. have? But That's still, true. it's like, really? Um, how do you fix that? Right. That's also weird because at that point, you know, you're like, someone's passed and you've just said all the nice things about them. Yeah. You know, like, they were such a great uncle. Yeah. And now they're back and you're like, well, yeah, no, I yeah, lied. He wasn't that great. <laughs> I know. That would be horrible. And then they'd be like, you said all those nice things about him. Like, well, uh, yeah, I did because I had to. Yeah. Being respectful. We were mourning. Yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. Now I can say it. <laughs> I don't know. I just think that's horrible. And I hope that they redo a DNA test if they're able to Seriously. on the body that they found. Right. To give the other families some like closure. Or send out some sort of memo. Like, yeah. You know, are you missing a family member? Exactly. We need to figure out right. Whose Come body with DNA like evidence of that person. Yeah, you know, and we'll test it. Yeah. Although I don't know if you'd want the same people to test it. I feel like you'd get I, some different people. I'd get a second opinion. You know, for get some sure. different teams. <laughs> God, man. Yeah. So I don't know. I just thought that was crazy for some families to. I mean, I know how it's like because I lost my mom six six years ago, mm -hmm. and that's hard enough. And then, you're right, yeah, you know, to go through all that is like, oh my gosh. And you're really, I would be freaked out. I would like seriously, just like the little girl, have probably a heart, a real life heart yeah. attack. Yeah. Like no way, you're really here. Are you what, just, yeah, yeah, that'd be hard to believe. Maybe this guy's just a zombie. He Maybe he did be. die, and then he just came back from the dead. Yeah. Because that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That happens all the time. I mean, it was two months later, not three days. So. Maybe he wandered around. 
Um, yeah, doing some, could be. Doing some other work. Yeah. Um, our next... Um, <laughs> sorry. Our next topic is about a man named Daniel Sloss. Um, I love his last name because <laughs> it sounds so weird. Sometimes like sloth. Yeah. Sloth. S-L-O-S-S. Daniel Sloss. Daniel Sloss is, <laughs> is a comedian and he has two shows out on Netflix right now. I'm going to tell you what's going on with Daniel Sloss when we come back from our next break. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast. We're going to talk about the man I mentioned before the break named Daniel Sloss, who is a comedian and has two shows out on Netflix right now. Now, the interesting, weird, uh, whatever, story about this man is he claims to... (laughs) So, okay, hold on. One of his shows on Netflix is called Jigsaw, Mm -hmm. and he does a bit about relationships. And it's like a 15, 20 minute bit. I've seen this bit because after I read this, I had to go watch it. Mm -hmm. I was like, no way. Um, He claims to, because of this bit, broken up 4,000, over 4,000 relationships and has caused 17 divorces in just 10 days of this being aired. 17 divorces. Yes. Yes. And they weren't just like mediocre divorces. Like I saw one of them message him and they were like oh was married for 19 years another one was like married for 13 years seven just mediocre divorce yeah it was like (laughs) long-term like marriages that that have no longer you know any relevance what yeah so (laughs) now he knows that he caused these um these breakups and divorces because after this bit and even after the show mm-hmm. he tells people if you break up because of this message me on Twitter or tweet me <laughs> about it so I can know cuz he wanted to know like how people like related to or if they even listen to his words I guess but um that's how he knows and then you'll even he even comments on some of them he's right. like oh that's 51 and counting or oh whatever my God. or yeah and even some of the comments will be like you can add another divorce to your you know <gasps> no, yeah but it's kind of sad <laughs> it is but at the same time it's not really because um in the bit he talks about how society puts out an image that or an idea that if you're not with somebody, you're either broken, incomplete, or mm. not whole. Mm. And as a result of a lot of people settle with the wrong person, um, just to have someone there and feel complete. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So he he goes on a, l- a little bit more depth with that. But his words of advice to were to not force the wrong people into your lives, but to accept and be happy with who you are first before you force somebody who doesn't fit. And Mm. um, then you're just, you know, stuck with somebody that you kind of settled for. Mm. You know what I mean? And then so this kind of struck a chord with a lot of people. And then they went back and reflected on their relationships and themselves and why they even began that relationship or you know maybe even just got comfortable and just let it keep going so that's why a lot of them are like you saved my whatever you know we're no longer together but some of them are still friends some of them get it some of them don't but apparently a lot of these people are a lot more happier that they took his advice and decided to kind of look at the real situation or a bigger picture as far as why they really chose to be with that person or marry that person right. or whatever. So, wow. Man, I hope I hope they did that for the right reason. You know, like I hope they yeah. didn't just like let fear 
like talk them into it you know right but i mean 10 days though that's not a long period of time it's really not that's not i feel like if that happened you're like already kind of thinking about it yeah you know like in the back of your exactly. head you're already considering yeah and if you watch the the bit or this this um dude stand up daniel mm-hmm. sloss on netflix i'm not like this isn't a pitch for him i just thought it was his delivery on this was amazing like how <laughs> he made it it make all all make sense is was he talks about how his dad Mm -hmm. kind of put it together for him when he was seven. Oh yeah. And that was one of his things is like, um, you know, everybody's putting their own jigsaw puzzles together and you got to find somebody who fits with you or something like that. Is he married or is he in a relationship? He's not. And he was in a toxic relationship. He does talk about his previous, um, relationship and about how he went through the same thing. Mm. Like he started changing for her and then trying to make himself fit into her little jigsaw puzzle when he forgot about his own jigsaw puzzle. He was working on kind of like metaphor there. You know what I mean? So, Um, it was a really good bit. Like I said, his delivery was great. Great. It makes sense because it, you know, he goes into how you said they probably were already thinking Mm -hmm. about it in some way. And he, that's exactly what he talks about too. He's like, if you're even thinking about it, then, you know, just listen. (laughs) Oh, wow. So he did a really good job. I watched this other one too, just because I was like, I have to see what he talks about in this other one. (laughs) Right. And the other one is called dark, but he, he makes sense. And I thought that was the weirdest thing that he was able to, you know, tweet me if you no. <laughs> broke up. I was like, oh my gosh, you want to know how you yeah. ruined these people's lives? Oh my God. Yeah. Especially if like one person in the relationship was like, oh yeah, I feel this. And the other person was like, wait, what? Yeah. But then that's, that's so not sad. fair for the other person it's too. It's not. It's not. Yeah. That's just like sad for the other person. It really is. Know? It really is. But then that other person is like, then you can do better. You can get oh, somebody who so. loves you for real. I hope. Yeah. And we're going to end on the um, topic of Stanley. I'm sure everybody knows that Stanley, the Marvel comic founder, creator, whatever, passed away yesterday. Mm-hmm. And um, the reason why I'm mentioning this in weird news is because I... I feel like it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of people feeling some type of way with the death of, he was considered a real life superhero. Yeah. Um, and for creating a whole universe of superheroes and villains that everybody can relate to in some way, shape, form, or fashion to any of them, it's going to be weird not seeing him like his live cameos in the future uh, Marvel movies and stuff like that. I'm sure they'll find a way. Like maybe put a picture of him like on a back wall or oh, something. Yeah, you know that. what I mean? But um, I also wanted to mention this because I thought it amazed me how many different people paid tribute to him. Like on such a range of people too. It wasn't just like just the actors or certain musicians or anything like that. Like I saw rappers, actors, band members, um, political figures like all sorts of people athletes um paying tribute to stan lee like soon as they heard that he right. passed not just like comic nerds yeah exactly yeah. and i don't <laughs> i don't think it was just like a comic nerd thing mm-hmm. because i grew up watching like Sunday morning or even after school cartoons yep. where like X-Men, like the original, X, I don't want to say the original, but they had like the yellow spandex suits, not like the <laughs> yeah. black ones they have yeah, now. Yeah. But yeah, those ones and Storm is my favorite always because oh, yeah. she's just awesome. Um, but yeah, I feel like his like comics and then the portrayal of them into cartoons and then TV shows because I know there's some on Netflix and on like... I don't know, local stations. Yeah. yeah. Um, there were some, and then also with the movies, I just think that it's, it, it amazed me how many people were aware of who this man was and how, like the impact he had, right. you know, just being a writer, a comic book writer. So I love Marvel. I mean, he did a lot. He was like a comic writer, editor, publisher. He was the editor in chief of like Marvel. Like Mm -hmm. he was like, it's chairman. He did a lot. Yeah, he he really did. did. He accomplished a lot in his life. He was 95. Yeah, he lived a good life. He did. He lived a good life. And I think it's um, a year after his wife of over 50 years passed. She passed last year. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 
Um, but he was an amazing guy. His work is amazing and it will forever live on because who doesn't like Marvel, you know? Yeah. (laughs) If you don't like Marvel and you're like more of a DC fan, I'm sorry for you. Yeah. I feel like that. I feel like if you're that fan, you would still mourn Stan Lee's yeah. death, though, because he was such a big figure in you know the comic comics books. world. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and not just like villains and it's like villains and heroes kind of storylines too. So any anybody can relate, mm-hmm. which uh, um, is also amazing too. That it was like not just older people who knew Stanley and knew he right. Worked. So many generations. Yeah. yeah, young people, old people, you know, middle, like everybody. So. I just wanted to throw that out there because it will be weird not seeing him like walk around and say his little bit in in the movies. They did say actually that he did do his last cameo in Avengers Four that oh, will be coming good. out. He did film that, so Thank God. you'll be able to see him in that. And I think he might have made one also for the upcoming Spider Man already. Oh, okay. So my brother in law is a like the biggest marvel fan i know and like he has every single no like every single comic book wow. of marvel like he can tell me anything i want to know about marvel like he's grew up, i don't know he's he's like the epitome of comic book nerd when it comes <laughs> to like marvel yeah so if you need to know anything yeah, he even tells me like how you know <laughs> when each movie is going to be coming out for the past 10 years he's like this one's coming out he'll send me like links of them and did you see this one i'm like oh Aww. yeah no i did but he shed a tear when stanley died oh, which he's like he's like a grandpa or whatever i'm like i get it i yeah. get it so um, but yeah, I just wanted to end on that because I do know some people are going to be feeling some type of way mm-hmm. with the passing of Stanley. He was a great man. So thank you so much for listening to our weird news podcast. Join us next time for some more weird news. <laughs>